Okay, hello and welcome. My name is Kylan Pelkey and I work at Peninsula Humane Society and SPCA in the Education Department. Welcome to our pep talk, Caring for Your Rabbit. And pep talks are part of our pet education program. And today we have the wonderful Kathy Goldschmidt with us. <laughs> Kathy has been a rabbit volunteer at our shelter for more than 25 years. She and I have become really great friends over the years and she has taught me everything I know about rabbits. So she has a lot of wonderful information for you to share today and I hope that you enjoy. Go ahead, Kathy. Thank you, Kylie. And thank you everyone for joining us. I understand we have a range of, of people viewing with us from very experienced people to new people who don't even have a rabbit yet but are just thinking about it. So I hope there's something in here for everybody and for experienced people, maybe a new tidbit or two uh, that you didn't know. Um, before we start, I just want to talk about one thing about rabbits that's really important, and that is that they're prey animals. And prey animals are genetically programmed to think, am I safe? And for a rabbit is thinking, am I going to be somebody's lunch? So no matter how many years they've been in your house or how many generations have been domesticated, they still have that hardwired DNA programming that they are prey. And, you, and that helps us uh, understand some of their behaviors. Two things I want to mention about the prey concept. First is their eyes are on the sides of their head. They can see forward, backwards, and they can even see over their head quite well, but they do not see well in front of their face, not in front of their nose. Um, and this is important to remember in terms of handling them or offering them food because they can't see your hand coming. Uh, the other part about prey animals is all prey animals, first line of defense is running. And if a rabbit is picked up, his feet can no longer you know, take him to escape. So many rabbits don't like to be picked up or held. And that's part of the reason that you can understand that. After they've been with you and they're used to you and they trust you, that, that whole behavior does modify. But in the beginning, they may not be too keen on being handled or picked up. And it has nothing to do with whether they like you or not like you. They just are not sure yet. Um, there's lots of ways to do things, and what I'm going to be talking about is one way to do things, a very basic, basic way to do these things. And if you're doing them differently, that doesn't mean it's wrong, and if it's working for you, that's great. So there are, there are variations that are just perfectly fine. Um, on that same note, we all know, we all go to Google when we want to know something. So when it comes to rabbits, um, you've got to make sure you've got good information. And at the end of the presentation, we have a couple of links to really good rabbit information websites. And those are good places to start. And after you're more familiar with rabbits, you have got the idea of what they're all about, then you can, you know, expand your Google searching. But there's a lot of bad information out there um, that appears to be correct, but it is not. So let's start with our first topic, which is food. First, next slide. This is an overview of a rabbit diet. Um, it's a little graphic thing. And we'll go through each one of these a little more detail. But overall, here's the idea. 80% of their diet is grass hay. And it could even be 90 or 100% of their diet. 10% uh, is the face there with the greens, veggies, green veggies. One ear, 5% healthy pellets. And it could be less than that, actually. And then the other ear. 5% are healthy treats. And I just want to explain treats a little bit because for what I'm talking about, treats means carrots or fruit. Um, and to us humans, that sounds like healthy food. But, but to a rabbit, the naturally occurring starch and natural sugar in fruit and carrots is harder for them to digest than other things that they should be eating. So that's why we want to keep it to a minimum on, on the treats. The other part about the treats is rabbits are little sugar addicts. And they will learn very quickly that if they do really cute things, like sit on their back legs and sit up and beg, or kiss you, or whatever, that you might get another banana. So you got to figure out how you're going to keep the treats under control, because they will be very manipulative in order to get more. Next slide, please. OK, our first that 80% to 100% of hay. So hay is a big deal. 
Um, and for it's two main reasons that hay is a big deal. First is their gastrointestinal tract. The hay is what keeps it moving. And rabbits have to be eating, digesting, and pooping 24 hours a day, every day. It's not like a dog or a cat that you can feed once or twice a day and they're fine. The rabbit has to keep eating. And that's why we have to provide unlimited amount of hay. The other reason is dental. Their teeth grow continuously. And the only way you know, they, we can, he can wear them down is by chewing on hay or wood or whatever, some other things. But the hay, it's interesting, the hay motion of chewing actually keeps the teeth worn down. Eating pellets and greens is a different chewing motion and it doesn't do the trick. So those are the two reasons that it's really important. So um, as the first bullet point there says, unlimited amounts of hay, not just the amount they're actually going to eat, but a big old pile so they can dig through it and forage and have a good time with it. It's sort of like uh, a bowl of jelly bellies and you're looking for the flavor that you like the best and they're looking for that perfect stem. So um, they need way more than just what they're gonna eat. And you can put it in a bucket or a bag or a basket, all kinds of places to put it. A slight digression here um, is the, that idea of foraging applies to greens and pellets too. Um, instead of just putting the pellets in a dish or the greens in one place, you can toss it around their X pen and it gives them something to do to find it. Just like the foraging of the hay, they're foraging for the pellets and the greens. Uh, second bullet point there is to buy it as fresh as possible, because the fresher it is, the tastier it is, and the more they're going to eat it. Buy a blend if possible, um, because it's more interesting, more flavors, and each one has slightly different nutrition, so that's a good thing. So in terms of blend, let's move over to those pictures there on the right. Those are all grass hays, oat hay, meadow hay, orchard hay, grass, and timothy hay. Timothy hay, the one on the bottom, is the most commonly used. It's easy to get good quality hay and they really like it. So that tends to be the one people use. Orchard, uh, orchard grass or meadow hay, perfectly good. It's just that they're not quite as available in, in good quality. But the top one is important, is oat hay. It is a grass hay, but there's a big difference for oat hay. And that is that it has a lot of calories. And the calories, if they only eat oat hay, can lead to obesity, which leads to medical problems. So oat hay is something that you can get a smaller amount of and blend it in with the other grasses and, and you've got a nice blend there because it tastes good, they really like it. Okay, back to the bullet points there on the left. The next line is avoid alfalfa for adults. And we tried to put those A's in there to make it easy to remember because it is sort of confusing all these different hays. So alfalfa is to be avoided for adults. And an adult rabbit is over six months. Under six months, alfalfa is perfect for baby bunnies. It has a lot of protein, a lot of calories, and a lot of calcium. It is not a grass hay. It's actually a legume like peanuts or garbanzo beans. So there you get your protein and your calories in there. And that's great for a baby bunny who's trying to grow. It also is good for specific situations like a nursing mother, a sick rabbit who's not eating and you're trying to entice him to eat and older bunnies who might be losing weight. So there's specific situations to use it and it's important, but not for healthy adults. The other thing about alfalfa is it can appear in your pellets and the treats you buy, if you buy little hard kind of like cookie treats, um, We'll talk about the pellets later, but it should not be alfalfa pellets. If, it's, if you see it as an ingredient in those little treats you're buying, it's probably okay because they're treats and you're not giving a lot of them. So a little bit of alfalfa makes it taste good. Um, the oat hay, as I said, is okay in small amounts. Um, straw is not hay. Straw is a byproduct of the processing and they use, uh, use it in barns for bedding, for horses, goats, chickens, whatever. And it's great for that, but it has no nutrition. So if you feed your rabbit straw, you're basically starving him. And this only might come up if you say bought hay at a farm or something, because hay, um, excuse me, if you bought straw at a farm, because straw looks sort of like that oat hay on the top. It's coarser and yellower than the grass hays. And last but not least, be aware of hay allergies. 
But yeah, rabbits brought back to the shelter for allergies. And people think it's the allergy to the rabbit's fur, which certainly can happen. But more often than not, it's allergy to hay, because that's much more common. You know, pollens and, and growing things causes a lot of allergies. So you'd have to really figure out which one it is. If it is the hay and it's not a terrible allergy, there are ways to work around it. But if it's really a severe allergy for a family member, there's really no way to separate a rabbit from his hay. They kind of are gonna be in your house and that's, that's tricky. So it's a good thing to think about ahead of time. Next slide, please. Okay, we're on to pellets. Pellets are really important to choose the right one. Now this picture of the Oxbow package, I don't have any stock in Oxbow, but it's a good brand and it's available just about everywhere. And as you can see from this package, it says adult rabbit food. If you were able to read the small print, it would say that the first ingredient is Timothy, which is what we were talking about. Timothy is good for uh, um, adults. They also make, Oxbow also makes another variety for baby bunnies or young rabbits. And if you look at that ingredient, it will say alfalfa as the first ingredient. So whatever brand you buy, make sure you know what's in it. And there's lots of good brands. I, I, you might have another brand, it's perfectly good, but I'm just using this one as a good example. And it looks like what's in that bottom dish on the right, just those little green things, very boring, but that's good. The dish above it looks way more interesting, but it looks to me more like it's something you feed a bird. It's got corn and grain and nuts and all kinds of things that a rabbit cannot digest. Their gut is not made to digest sugar or starch. And that stuff is toxic to a rabbit. So if it, it, it's marketed to people and that's who they're, they know we're gonna look at that and say, oh, that's interesting, I'll get that for my rabbit. But that's definitely to be, to be avoided. Now on back to the left side comments, um, how do you know how much? Well, the current thinking has been for quite a while is you do it by the weight of the rabbit. So the ration would be one eighth to a quarter cup per five pounds per day. That's per day. So that's probably one feeding in the morning or the afternoon, but that's it. It used to be that rabbits were free fed, meaning you left a big old bowl of pellets out all the time. But that goes back to when rabbits were being bred for meat and they wanted them as fat as possible. So they gave them as much to eat as they could. could, could. Um, if you are free feeding right now, you can't just cut it back and say, oh, that woman told me I should do this. Um, it's, it's a very dangerous thing to do. They can get what's so called liver dumping and it changes their metabolism so quickly they can get into medical problems. So if you do have to be feeding more than that and you want to get down to a, a, the proper amount, you might need to check with your vet. It takes quite a while, many, many weeks to get them down from free feed to that low level. And at the same time you're doing that, you need to provide lots of hay and toys and interesting things because they're gonna feel very insulted that you've taken away their free feed bowl. Um, uh, again, free high quality pellets and only alfalfa for the baby bunnies or the elderly bunnies. Okay. Next slide, please. The vegetables, I'm gonna go quickly because you've got it in your PDF file and there's lots of good online sources where you can find it. The important thing to remember here is there's good and there's bad. It's not all good just because it came from the produce department. The good line is those are the good side, lots of good things there. The bad stuff is bad. <laughs> Um, there's one item on there to point out, and that is the Lysberg lettuce. Iceberg lettuce is just water and nothing nutritional, and it gives, can give them diarrhea. But you might note that on the good side, dark leaf lettuce is there, and that's the red stuff or romaine or something like that, and that's, that's good. But iceberg lettuce is not good. Now, under sparingly, we've got the carrots and the fruit, which we talked about. Um, those have a lot of natural sugars in them. And we think of them as healthy treats, like and we'd be thrilled if our kids ate carrots and fruit. 
But for rabbits, it needs to be really, really restricted. And as I said, they are just real sugar addicts and they can become very demanding if they don't get what they want and how much they want. But um, it's much better to provide other things instead. Now, we know food is love. And when they sit up on their hind legs and they beg, it's really hard to deny them. But there's other treats that could be given instead. And at the end of this, we have some links to some really good websites where you can buy treats that they will love. They will love you just as much and they're totally healthy. Kale is on that list because it has a lot of calcium and calcium can cause urinary tract stones. Some people say no kale at all, ever. But I think it's a more moderate version would be, yeah, it can have it sometimes, mix it in. The good part about kale is it keeps in your refrigerator a long time. So you can buy one bunch and then pass it out sparingly as a little bit of a treat. It's very tasty and they do love it. Um, so, question about carrot tops. so um, one thing I forgot to mention on the hay, we get rabbits returned to PHS for allergies frequently. And people are assuming they are allergic to the fur of the rabbit. It's actually often, probably even more often, it's the hay. So you should be aware that uh, the hay can be a source of allergies if you've got someone in your family who's got allergy problems. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. Shopping. Now, we're all shopping online. And as I said, we have some links at the end, but we do end up going to the store sometimes. So this is what you're faced with. And it's like, what is this stuff? Well, about 85% of this picture is bad. So let's go through a few things so you can be a good shopper and figure out how to figure out what's good. On the top left, we've got these mats and those are good. They're usually made out of, uh, Kylan's got the little arrow going there. Um, they're made out of seagrass and other things that are good. So that's a good thing. Right below that is a salt lick on a string. Rabbits do not need salt in any shape or form. It comes in their diet and it's just causing trouble to give them more salt than they need. And to the right of that, we've got a little kind of a shish kebab thing with a pine cone. Pine cones, um, I'm not sure what to tell you on that one. I've had vets say absolutely never give them a pine cone, but those little pricky things can puncture their gut. If other vets say it's okay, I feel personally to be safe than sorry and no pine cones, because there's lots of other things. The item next to that, that looks like a corn cobby thing, um, that looks like it's probably fine, but I just want to bring up the point that whatever you buy, make sure it's constructed safely, because a rabbit's going to chew it apart. And if it's got any kind of a plastic or loose piece that's holding it together, they might eat it. So just look at how it's constructed. To the right of that are these little cylindrical colored things. I think those are loofah sponges. I've never given loofah sponges, but I think they're, they're good. Um, I'm concerned here about the color. So anything that's colored that brightly is made with chemicals of some sort that we don't know exactly what they are. The other part is rabbits can't see those colors, so it doesn't really matter. They'd be perfectly happy with all these naturally occurring colors. So anything colored like that, I would be suspicious of. On the right side, on the right side of this top row, we've got a whole line of these things that are made out of um, a bunch of grains and peanuts and that sort of stuff, and it's glued together with cornstarch. And people think these are really nifty because you just leave them in the cage and they can chew on them. But that has everything bad in it that I've just mentioned, corn and nuts and cornstarch. There's nothing good. So those are to be avoided. Most of the rest of that right-hand side are these little packages of treats at the blue ones and the white ones. And they all sound so tasty. Raspberry yogurt drops and blueberry whatevers. Um, again, they're marketing to us because those look good to us. But they're, if you look at the ingredients, it's corn syrup and whey and all kinds of stuff that isn't good. For the same price, you can buy a healthy, equally delicious treat and your rabbit will love you just as much. And uh, I, again, those websites will have those types of treats. But whatever the treat is, regardless of it's healthy or not, it is a treat and needs to be restricted. The one last thing on this side is right where Kylan's got her arrow above the S on the shopping. 
these are compressed hay cubes and those are those are good because they can chew on them and push them around they do come in different types the alfalfa one it would be avoided for the reasons i've already given be okay for a baby bunny um so you'd look for the timothy ones however the timothy ones have alfalfa in them a little bit to make them taste good so if you do get those it's not something you would leave three cubes in their cage all the time. It's kind of a treat, or maybe you're trying to divert them from some other behavior. So they're, they're good to have, no problems. Okay, next slide. Here we are at the store again, just as a reminder, the one on the left is this very attractive package with this cute little bunny and this lovely farm and the stuff inside that's so bad. And if you look at the package, it says good for digestion, good for their teeth. This is completely wrong. And so they're leaving it up to us to know to avoid it. The packages in the middle are hay that you can buy at the store. The red ones are hay, uh, Timothy hay. The green ones are a blend. And I don't know exactly what's in it. So you'd have to check to see if you know you're buying alfalfa. And the gold one at the top is orchard hay. These are going to be fine but they're not gonna be quite as fresh because of all the processing and distributing and sitting in warehouses. So you might consider buying uh, from a fresh source, which we'll give at the end. Just how much hay does a rabbit eat? Well, a six pound rabbit, so that's kind of a medium sized rabbit, will eat 10 pounds of hay in a month. So if you're going through 10 pounds of hay in a month, you might want to get the big box. Okay, next. Topic is handling. Um, handling is tricky at first when you're just not used to handling. If you've never had one and you're like, how do I do this safely? And it takes a little bit of practice and it takes your rabbit getting used to you. And once they do, then it's way easier. Um, and we have a couple of little videos to show you. But first of all, I want to go through a few of the do's and don'ts. One thing to think about before you of handling is how a rabbit's body is made. Their bones are very fragile. About less than 8% of their body weight is bone. So they can break easily and they can break their own bones easily because their back legs are so strong. The muscles are very strong. And if they get frightened and kick, they can break a leg or their back. And this is something to remember when you're trying to handle a wiggly bunny. Don't try to win the battle. Just let him down and try again. And that's something that I do all the time. I handle a lot of rabbits, but sometimes they just don't want it and they just don't want me to pick them up. So I'm not gonna try to win. Um, the don'ts on the left. One thing you might not think about is when you come in from above, you are replicating a predator bird. And for the rabbit who's not able to see completely clearly above, this swooping down looks like something dangerous and that's scary. Uh, the other thing is, this is a real big one, never chase them because once you chase them, you become the predator. So you have to find other ways to capture them and pick them up that does not involve chasing them. It only gets, makes things worse because the next time they remember that you were chasing them. Don't let the feet dangle. Now, when you pick them up, their feet dangle a little bit at the beginning, and you'll see that in the videos, but it's not something like you can leave them hanging out in the middle of the air with their feet dangling. That's very scary. The don't pick up from the armpits or lift them by their ears or scruff them. That all has to do with that anatomy, that very fragile skeletal system. Um, mother cats pick up their kittens by the scruff. But mother rabbits don't do that. And rabbits are not designed to be picked up that way. As for dews, um, we approach them from the side so they can see you. And I always talk to them and pet their head and let them know what's happening. Supporting the hind legs is super important because those are the kicking legs. And you need to try to figure out how to get those, those uh, restrained and supported. Starting while you're sitting down is really helpful, especially if you're new to rabbits, new to this rabbit, or you have a nervous rabbit, or with kids. Because when you're sitting down, the rabbit wants to jump out of your lap, that's fine, you can jump back. So it's really great You sit there with your phone or you watch television and let him get used to jumping in and out of your lap and you can get used to handling him. 
going slowly is important, slow enough to be safe. You don't want to drag it out. <laughs> so you want to be purposeful, but slow. And children need supervision. And that's the sitting down part works really well for kids because they can let the rabbit jump in and out of their laps. So let's take a look at the video. We have three different videos. This first one is a cooperative rabbit. And uh, you're going to play the video, Kylene, and I'll just talk while we're doing it. So I'm petting his head, talking to him. You can't hear me. I'm letting him know it's okay. And I scoot him around and lift him up with that rear end in my elbow and holding his front legs with my hand. And he's fine with this. And you can see his foot's kind of hanging down there, but his bottom is tucked tight against my body. So he feels okay. So let's see the next one. The next one is a rabbit who's really mugging in a monk for the camera. And this is a position that is often used by people. It's a little different, but it's the same start, heading and talking. And here I'm going, I'm gonna pick you up. And I pick him up, same thing with against my body, hold his feet. And he's gonna mug. Now this position of having his back against my body some people do that and some rabbits like that. It's not quite as secure as the football hold of the first one, but it still is okay, it's safe. There's nothing wrong with that. And this rabbit clearly is perfectly fine with it. The next video is a rabbit who is frightened. This is not a rabbit who hates me, but he's frightened. Okay, he's under the chair. He says, I'll hide here, maybe she can't find me. I try to move the chair but he escapes. So now he's over there where I can't really reach him very well. So I touch his, after I move the cage, I touch his tail, just not push him, just touch it. He takes off. Then he goes to the corner and I can drop, oop, we drop the towel over him and pick him up. So I'd like to say a couple of things on this one. Um, once he's in my arms, you can see he's fine. He's not scared. It was the picking up he didn't like. Uh, if I would have missed on that third time, then I would have given up. Say, okay, we are approaching predator mode and he's not gonna be good with that. So then I would have come back. The towel thing is, a, is perfectly safe. It's not abusive in any way. Um, and it really stops them in their tracks. So if you have trouble catching your rabbit, if you can get them to go to a corner and then drop the towel, that's one, one technique. Um, and the towel is actually good at any time. They love to be snuggled and wrapped in a towel. It's a very secure feeling for them. Okay, next topic. Well, just some basic supplies. Um, you need a cage or an X or an exercise pen, and we'll talk about those more later. Um, the litter box, which is down, you have a picture there. It needs to be big enough for the litter plus a whole bunch of hay. Because this is a combination bathroom, dining room. And they like to hang out there. I mean, it may sound gross, but they do. And they'll just sit there and it needs to be big enough for them to stretch out a little bit and not be squished. They sell some litter boxes that are kind of a triangle shape, which um, are very handy for a small space, but Usually it's too small for the rabbit to do litter boxing very well. It's not, it's not a terrible thing, but if you can get a bigger one in your space, that's probably better. And it should have proper bedding, which we'll I'll give you some names later, um, a water bottle or two, the high quality food, and grooming supplies. So on the top there on the left, we have the green handled clippers. Um, there's different clippers, which I'll talk about later and you need a brush. You need some toys. And that Timothy tunnel there on the top right is a good toy because he can also eat it. Um, he can hide in it, he pushes it around, you can stick extra hay in it. It's kind of a handy thing. Toys are a whole big thing. There's all kinds of great toy ideas for rabbits. Everything from measuring cups from your kitchen to toilet paper rolls things you don't have to even buy, but they love to throw things and toss them and, and, and play with them. They're very fun to watch. They need a hidey box of some sort, and it can just be a cardboard box on its side, but they need a place to go inside that's safe. 
The other item there is a carrier taking to the vet and we all need that. Okay, next slide. Okay, housing. Um, the X-Pen has become very popular because first of all, it's, it's a great solution for the rabbit and it's very flexible for people's homes. You can make it bigger or smaller. So let's just look at this guy's pen, which is he, he's got a great setup. I would like to point out that this has probably just been cleaned because this is as clean as you'll ever see it because that rabbit is going to go over to the hay, the hay basket on the top left there and he's going to pull all the hay out through those slats. And that's great. That's what he's supposed to be doing. Then next to that hay basket, we have his hidey hole, his basket upside down with a hole in it. Then he's got this really nifty or, uh, green tunnel thing. And these things are collapsible to about, I don't know, three, four inches. It's sort of like an accordion and you can make them shorter, bigger, twisty or whatever. He's also got some old shipping paper that came in your Amazon box and they love to play with paper, newspaper. Some of them will chew it and, you know, make a, a big pile of debris. And he's also got there one of those mats that we showed on the shopping slide on the ground there. Then moving to the right, he's got his water bottle and his food dish and two litter boxes. He doesn't really need two litter boxes, but sometimes it's nice to offer two and some rabbits actually like to. And you can see he's got the litter in there and the hay. And he's got plenty of space to stretch out. And then of course he has his cushy bed in the middle. This rabbit's got a great setup. This can also be combined with a cage for some reason, if you wanna be able to close them in a cage, you could open the x pen and hook it on the sides of the cage. The other part of this picture that's important is the floor. Because lots of times you may be putting this on a hardwood floor or a, um, a carpet and you, don't, you want it protected. So one option is a cheap shower curtain, $3 at Target, and then you cover it with a sheet. So the plastic protects the floor and the sheet gives them something softer to stand on. <coughs> the trouble with sheets and towels is that when they chew them, which a lot of them do, the fibers come out and they can ingest them and they can get GI, uh, GI blockages from those threads. Some rabbits never do it and it's never a problem. So you just have to assess whether your rabbit's a chewer or not. But if they are, I wouldn't take a chance of having them ingest the fibers. A great option is a fleece blanket because fleece is man-made. If they chew a hole, it's just a hole. It doesn't leave fibers. So that's a good, a good option in their cages, fleece. This particular picture has another option, which is linoleum, a little piece of linoleum that covers the floor and you've got everything on top. The important thing on this is the linoleum extends beyond the X pin because you don't want him to get to the edge of the linoleum and be able to chew it and eat it. Now, if this rabbit gets bored, he might push the X pin off the linoleum and then he can, then he can reach the edge and he can start chewing it. So if you've got one like that, you'd put a bookend or a brick or something to keep him from moving it, just to make sure that he doesn't have access to that edge. Okay, next slide, please. The other option is a cage. Uh, and as I said, it could be combined with an X-Pen giving him more space. But if it's just a cage, it needs to be as big as possible. Bigger is better. Most of the cages they sell in stores are too small. And they really are too small, except for a very, very small rabbit. Uh, so that's a, that's a problem. Um, the other thing about the cages they used to sell is they had wire floors. I have to say, I looked online and most of them they sell now have plastic floors. But the older ones had wire floors and that was because rabbits were kept outside and the poop fell through the wire and no cleanup, very easy. So, um, the problem with the wire is it's very uh, much of a pressure on their feet. You can imagine standing on that 24 seven with those little wires pushing on your feet. Um, most rabbits do have a padding on the bottom of their feet, like a sole of your shoe. And that's a natural uh, for them. Even with that, it's still uncomfortable. 
There is one breed that doesn't have that foot padding. And I just want to mention it because it's a common breed and it's called a Rex, R-E-X. They are gorgeous rabbits uh, who were bred for their fur to be like velvet. It's just like velvet. But in that breeding process, the bottom of their feet became almost hairless or at least very thin hair. So they don't have that protection that other rabbits have. And so being on wire is particularly problematic for them. And they can get what's like, you'd say like a bed sore. It can get infected, it can get opened up. So you need to keep an eye on that. Because you could have a rabbit that's a crossbreed, has some Rex in them and ends up with thin fur on his feet. Um, if you have a wire cage, you can put down a fleece blanket, a piece of cardboard, ground gar uh, grocery bag, something like that, just to give them some protection. The multi-level cage they've got here is great. Rabbits like levels. Even if it's a cardboard box inside your cage, they love to be up. The other thing I'd mention about this uh, setup is there's a window, so it's got some nice sunlight, but you have to be careful that it doesn't get too hot and that the rabbit has a place to evade the sun, which it looks like this one does. They don't like heat and they can get heat stroke. Um, the door on this one is important. It's got a great big door. And that's very important for rabbits because in just in the natural habitat of a rabbit is to dig a burrow and live in a tunnel. And that tunnel is a very small opening. So to a rabbit, someone entering a small cage a small door on a cage looks like a predator. And if you have a rabbit who's in a cage and the cage door is small, that might be what's happening if he doesn't uh, like you going in there. So you either have to let him come out on his own or get a bigger door, because that's what they're thinking. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, indoors only. DHS has a policy not to adopt rabbits unless they are going to be kept indoors. And there are very, very good reasons for this. We'll start with the first one there, predators. Um, now this cage, this hutch outside looks perfectly fine and there's nothing actually wrong with the hutch itself except that it's outside. And that rabbit inside that hutch may not be physically attacked. I mean, the, the raccoon and the skunk and possum can't get him, but he may die of stress. They, they can die of stress and, and the whole terror of being attacked. So we have raccoons, possums, hawks, all, that's, all those predators are around our urban, suburban areas and the rabbit is very vulnerable. Even if he's not, even if he's not physically attacked, he would be facing terror every night wondering if they're coming to get him. So that is really a consideration. The second thing is socialization. They do much better in the house. If you had a dog and you put him in a cage outside, he's not gonna be very social. And rabbits are extremely social animals and they will respond to your voice, the sound of your feet, your family, and be part of your family inside. Third would be heat, which I already mentioned, they do not do well in the heat. Um, disease, there are diseases that can come from outside, mostly with fleas, ticks, and those types of things. There's two diseases that rabbits get from fleas that are deadly and have no treatment. And you know, having them outside puts them at higher risk to get those diseases. Now, the last line there is outside with supervision. Kylin and I were back and forth over the way we should include this because it's a very, it's sort of a dicey topic, but we decided to include it because people may want to do it and we want to give you the information so you can make your own decision. I want to make clear that I am not endorsing this. I'm just giving the information. Um, going outside could mean everything from letting them go loose in the yard to maybe you have a, a nice deck where they're in kind of enclosed and someone's watching them. It could be any number of, of situations. Um, let's take one for example, if you had an X-pen and you put it outside on the grass or the dirt where the rabbit can feel the grass or the dirt on his feet but he's enclosed. 
Well, we got a couple things about the X pin. He could dig out underneath. He could go over the top. And I have to, I forgot actually on the X pin slide, it said 30 inches. I'm sorry, I, I did skip this. Um, the X pen slide slide as 30 inches. Kylan and I just kind of came up with that as a height because it's pretty safe. But rabbits can go over. They can climb out if they're frightened or motivated and they can get hurt. So back to our outside thing. So it could go over the top. Um, the other thing is hawks. Um, they can spot that rabbit from a long way away and come swooping down. You could put a sheet over the top and clip it on with clothespins, gives the rabbit a protection and he's not as visible. Um, so that's one, one way to possibly, you know, handle that situation. The other, so that's kind of the x pen. The other problem is the ground he's standing on. And most gardens and yards have pesticides, fertilizer, rat poison, ant bait, all kinds of things that we, you know, you may have forgotten you put out. And you have to think, is this a safe spot? If you don't do your own gardening, you might not even know what's being put in your yard. So you'd have to find that out before you used a certain spot. A rabbit's a very small animal, so it doesn't take too much of a toxic ingredient to make them sick. Okay, so another option is letting them go in the yard. You'd have all those things I just mentioned, predators and all that stuff. And then a couple more. Um, one is the plants in the yard. There's toxic plants in all our yards that we don't think of as toxic. For example, daffodils and holly are both toxic. Um, so you'd have to know what, what plants your rabbit is being exposed to and possibly could eat. Um, the other thing for both the X pin and just loose in the yard goes back to those predators. Raccoons, possums, skunks carry some really nasty diseases. Um, they carry them in their feces. There's parasites and some other diseases that they go, if they're through your yard, going to the bathroom, leaving droppings, your rabbit could be exposed to what's left behind. And they also have fleas um, and they could leave those behind. So that's that. The other part about if you do the loose in the yard thing is um, how are you gonna catch them? You've got a rabbit that's gonna come when you call him um, or you're gonna have to chase him. And then that becomes a bit of a problem. One choice that is not, I completely understand this is not the same thing, but it gives a slight option is if you have a garage door that opens, you put the X-Pen in the garage at the opening, rabbit has fresh air, you can hear the birds, has a change of scene and you don't have any of these issues. So those are the things to be considering and I hope, I hope that was helpful in case you were thinking about doing that. So next slide, please. These are like <coughs> odds and ends that we didn't fit in someplace else about housing. Um, bunny proofing, when you let them out to exercise or play, they need to have bunny proofing done because they have incredible teeth that can go through more things than you can imagine. On the right here, we have kind of these nifty little picket fences that can be used by attaching them. You can see that little green adhesive. You stick them on there and it protects your baseboards and they do love baseboards and it protects the wires behind it. Now, if you were to extend these pickets, you can see that there's a space above the, from the picket to the cord plug where the cord is exposed and you'd have to protect that. And that's what that other black, that's black uh, stuff that we show with the man's holding it. Um, you can buy that at the hardware store and it's terrific for covering all cords in any, any shape, shape or form. They chew on a cord, they can burn themselves in their mouth, bad burns, or they can get electrocuted. So you really wanna, and we won't even talk about what that could do to your computer. So we don't wanna have that happen. Um, the litter box, uh, with another odds and ends, here's the two brands that you can recommend. One is Carefresh, which is made out of recycled newspapers. I would just like to say it comes in two colors. It comes in gray and it comes in white. The white is nice and it looks very fluffy, but rabbit urine is naturally often the orange color, even a dark orange. And if you come down and you see this big orange splotch in your white litter, it's quite alarming. It looks like they're bleeding, but
but it, they're, it, they're, that's a natural color. So I stick with the gray carafish myself, so I don't have to look at them. Um, cat country is a grass-based um, litter also very good. And then uh, exercise, if they're in a cage, they really need to be out a couple hours a day. And when you say exercise, they don't come out and run around for two hours. They run around for one minute and they flop and then they go do something else. But they need to be out and about and have that mental stimulation if, if they're kept in a cage or if they're in an x pen, they can come out and have a little extra. Next slide, please. Healthcare. Okay. This is a, a whole topic of itself. So I'm going to kind of slip through the really important things. Um, spotting the illness. So how do you spot symptoms in a rabbit? Um, the answer to that is it's going to be very subtle probably. And you, and you have them in your house so that you know what their regular normal patterns are. Then you can recognize something not normal. And this would be something, for example, like they're sitting in a spot that they never sat before. Why is he sitting in that corner? Why is he sitting funny? He's sitting funny because he might be in pain. Um, maybe he didn't run over and get his treats like he usually does, or didn't eat all his pellets, or the poops aren't as numerous. These are the kinds of things. And someone else might not even realize that's abnormal and to be worried about. So it's often very subtle. Types of illnesses. Uh, they can get anything that another mammal can get. They can get uh, respiratory infection, pneumonia, eye infection, uh, fleas, ticks. Uh, they can sprain or break a leg. They can get a laceration. They can get an abscess from an embedded oat head. Um, they can get GI problems. So they can get anything other mammals get. Choosing a veterinarian. This is a real important thing that sometimes is not appreciated. Rabbits are considered exotic animals and most small animal vets do not take care of them. They do cats and dogs, not rabbits. And this could be the difference between successful treatment and a bad outcome if you have a rabbit that's really sick. So you need to have that sorted out ahead of time, establish yourself, establish yourself as a patient with a rabbit vet. Spaying and neutering. Well, if you, if you were one of the people who got rabbits from PHS, they would have been already spayed or neutered, so you're good. If you don't have a spayed or neutered rabbit, I put that to the top of your list of something to do, not just for the reason that we don't want more rabbits, but for their health. Their health is important. They can get some reproductive cancers if they're not spayed or neutered, and their behavior also. Um, PHS has a wonderful, very low-cost spay-neuter clinic. But when I checked yesterday, they were not taking new appointments at this time because they were so booked. But it, it's, it's still a great resource um, to have. And they're extremely skilled at doing rabbit spays. Doing a rabbit spay is not an easy thing. You need to do lots of them to be good at it. So um, anyway, spay and neutering, do it. Um, grooming. Grooming is a health item, actually, as opposed to just like, you know, how, how snazzy do you look? Um, because we've got to get that fur off. When they shed and they groom themselves, they are ingesting the fur. And unlike a cat who can hawk up a hairball, it stays in the rabbit's gut. So somehow we have to get that fur through the gut and out the other end. And one way we can help is to brush them and keep the fur down to a, a manageable level. Uh, the other grooming thing is nails, um, trimming nails so they, because if they get too long, they can rip them. Um, fleas, a problem. Uh, besides the, just the annoyance of fleas, they can carry these diseases that are deadly to rabbits. Flea medication. Um, rabbits are not the same as cats and dogs, and they have to be given a specific flea treatment. Um, and just because it's okay for a kitten doesn't mean it's okay for a rabbit. And specifically on that is frontline. Frontline is toxic to rabbits. And I just looked at a box at the store recently, and it does not say that on there. It says, it says, you know, just this is a great product. So you have to be alert on that. And if you need a flea medicine, it's also given by sometimes by the weight of the rabbit, if it's a really small rabbit or a really big rabbit. So best to check with a vet. Emergencies. So what's an emergency? 
Well, obviously, if he sneezes once or limps once, this is not an emergency, although you'd want to, you know, get to a vet to see what's happening. So true emergencies, like, you know, a broken leg, laceration, a seizure, those kinds of things are emergencies and they need to be seen right away. We have a lot of 24-hour veterinary clinics in our area, in the Bay Area, and we're very lucky to have them, but they don't always have a rabbit vet on duty when you need it. So before you go driving someplace, call and see if they have a rabbit vet on. On a true emergency, it will make the difference between a successful treatment or not. There is one emergency that I wanna mention because it's very common, and that's called GI stasis. It stands for gastrointestinal stasis, which means either slow down or blockage in their GI tract. That means the pooping has stopped. Um, as we said, they've got to eat, digest, and poop all the time. It's not like a cat that you can feed him breakfast and he's fine the rest of the day. So um, what this happens is their gut stops working, they stop eating, then it becomes a more vicious cycle because they feel sick, they don't eat, and the gut really stops and you've got a blockage and it needs to be taken care of at a vet. And that is, it's a serious situation. And that's the type of really subtle symptom that I'm talking about where they're sitting in the corner looking off um, and you can't put your finger on it. That could be what's happening. The last line there, rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus. Kylin and I wanted to include that just so you could say you've heard of it. It's, it's something that isn't currently in our area a big concern, but it probably will be. It's a virus that's passed by fleas, ticks, mites, and those sorts of things. Um, there's a lot of information about it on the House Rabbit Society website if you want more information, but it's deadly and there is no treatment. In Europe, where it's very common, they get vaccinated every year, the rabbits, but we are not able to get the vaccine here. But it's just something to know about. So if the next year you go to your vet, you can ask for that, that vaccine and maybe, maybe we can have it more available in our area for our rabbits. Next slide, please. Grooming. Okay, we have this really cute little white bunny who looks like he's very stunned that all that fur came off of his body. And yes, it's not Photoshop. That fur could have come off his body. Now, if that all came off in one brushing, I'd have to say he hasn't been maintained very well, but it could be possible. Um, so brushing and combing is very important. On the top right, we have some tools. The first one on the left is that kind of adhesive tape stuff that's on the roller, and that is a great tool. We have a little video showing how that works. And it's a good thing because kids can do it and it's, you know, the rabbits might like it because it feels good and it's safe. The next two items, the green brushes, have those rubber tips on them, and they are extremely safe. There's no problem using those. They may not be quite as effective as the one with the metal teeth, but they are totally safe and they do work. The next one, which is a purple handle, it says rabbits on the handle, it's called a hair buster. And it's probably the best, but it also has to be used very carefully, or you can lacerate the rabbit's skin. Rabbits have very fragile skin, not like our skin, and it can be cut easily. And we have a video showing how to use this tool. It's terrific, but you just have to use it correctly. The last one on the right, a little kind of rectangular one, um, also good. It has little metal prong teeth. And this picture shows little white dots on the end. And those are little tips on the end of the wires. And you wanna make sure you get a brush that has those tips. Without the tips, the wires are totally exposed and they could just lacerate, like, you know, very, it would be very bad. Um, the hair buster brush and the one with the other wires might not be good for kids to use because they are a little trickier and you don't want to cut some, cut the rabbit. Down below, we have our nail clippers. Nail clipping is something that a lot of people have trouble with. So you could have your vet show you how to do it or the vet tech, and then you feel comfortable doing it. Um, even if you don't like to do it, you either have to force yourself or take them to the vet. Because if their nails get too long, they can rip off. And if they get really too long, it can affect how they pop. 
The one on the left, the first one there with the green handles, um, is a terrific tool that Kylin introduced me to. And it has a little stop. I don't know if you can see where the, where the mouth of the scissors is open. There's a little stopping thing. Thank you, right there, yes. So when you put the nail in there, it stops and you won't, won't go too far. Rabbits have a blood vessel down the middle of their nail. And if you go too far, you'll cut it and it'll bleed. So that is a very handy tool. The one next to it has a loop and the nail goes through the loop and then you compress those scissors, clip it off. And the little one with the yellow handles, uh, you just put the nail through and clip it. The little yellow handle one is, is very popular because it fits in your hand really nicely and you feel like you've got good control. But it doesn't have a stop, so you have to be careful. You've got a bunny with dark nails. It's a little trickier because you can't see the blood vessel like you can on a white rabbit. At the end of the video, we have a link that goes to um, excuse me, at the end of our presentation, there's a link to a video about nail trimming, which might be helpful. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, here's our grooming slide. And here's gonna be using this hair buster brush. And um, you can see the brush is parallel to his fur, not perpendicular, but parallel to the fur so those nails don't scratch across his skin. And then with my free hand, I'm holding his body like you, you know, preventing it from pulling on his skin. So you see he's doing okay, he likes this perfectly well, but the trick is that is keeping that at the right angle. So he's, he seems to be okay with this. Now the next slide, the next video uses that um, adhesive tape stuff and you can see how very effective it is very quickly. One swipe, and this is after he's been brushed, you can still pull this stuff off. And that's something the kids can do and a rabbit usually likes it because it feels like a massage. Okay, next slide, please. Coming to the end here. Um, we put this one on here because books of rabbits that we all know and love are the source of a lot of misconceptions. These little pictures look like these rabbits love wearing their little blue coats and pulling wagons and being very compliant and placid and cooperative. Well, we know that rabbits are not compliant and complacent. They are opinionated and they are determined. And this has presented a lot of people with some misconceptions about what rabbits are like. Last slide, please. This one is a little overview of misconceptions and they cover some things we've had, but some couple new points. Um, First misconception, rabbits are in, in exp inexpensive to care for. Well, we know they're not. I think you've gotten that pretty, pretty clearly. Uh, number two, they're low maintenance. I think that one we've gotten pretty clearly. They do take daily attendance. Rabbits don't need much social interaction or atten attention. And they absolutely do. They are extremely social animals and they will become an important part of your house um, with time and, and, and trusting you. I've myself and other people have told me that their rabbits behavior and personalities have changed during the COVID year. Even rabbits who got lots of attention before are now even better. So that really is true. Number four, the rabbits have pretty much the same temperament. Well, if you look at the cages at the shelter and you see the rabbits all sitting there like little lumps, they kind of all look like they have the same personality but they don't. They're like any other animal from calm and gentle to mischievous troublemaker guy and everything in between. Five rabbits have short lifespan. Uh, no, 10 to 12 years is their lifespan. Um, unfortunately, people kind of lump them in with some other small animals that do have short lifespan like hamsters or rats. They do have short lifespan, but a rabbit is with you for a long time. Number six, rabbits don't need vet care. We, they do need vet care and they need um, checkups, just regular checkups. And people sometimes say, well, why does it cost so much? Well, a blood test is a blood test and an x-ray is an x-ray, regardless of whether it's a rabbit or an expensive purebred dog. So you have to you know, be aware of that as a possibility. Number three, rabbits are happiest, uh, number seven, excuse me. Rabbits are happiest outdoors, we went through that. Um, number eight, they like to be picked up and cuddled. They probably will learn to be liked up, 
pick up and cuddle, but they may not like it initially. So you don't, sometimes people will say, oh, they don't like me. It has nothing to do with you personally. It's just that they're just learning to trust. And that takes a while. There are some rabbits that never learn to like it. They might tolerate it, but they might not like it. Number nine is that they smell. They do not smell. Their litter box might smell if it's not taken care of, and they might have smells related to some sort of illness. So they don't smell if they're cared for. Number 10, they only need pellets for food. We know that's not true. Number 11, that's a tough one. They can be left alone while you're on vacation. They can't really. Um, and you really have to have someone taking care of them who knows rabbits, not somebody who's just going to come once a day and fill the water bottle and throw out some more greens. They get sick very fast and they can go downhill very fast. So they really need to have someone who knows rabbits. And number 12, rabbits make great pets for small children. We will not define what small children means here because I've met three-year-olds who were terrific. And I've met older kids who really didn't get it. So it really depends on the kids and the parents and how much supervision you want to give them. Um, but they do need to understand that a rabbit is not a cat, does not like to be treated like a cat or a dog, and they need to be old enough to understand that. So next slide is the last slide. This one is not on your PDF file. So if you want any of these websites, um, you could take a picture, write them or write them down, or you can contact Kylie and she can send you this link. I have no financial interest in any of these places, but they have the really good information for people who are looking. Number one is the House Rabbit Society, which is an international rescue organization who happens to have their headquarters in Richmond and who are fabulous. They've got a great website at www.rabbit.org. It's wonderful educational material information that you can search for. And they also have a pop shop, it's called, for supplies and toys. And anything you get there, you can be sure it's okay. Um, and that's one place you can get the hay, the fresh hay shipped to you. Number two is Binky Bunny. It's, um, it has educational information and it has these great cottontail cottage, cotton cottages that some of you may know about and other supplies. Rabbit Haven is, is a rescue organization. They don't sell anything, but they have excellent information. Small Spets Pet Select is a business where they're selling things. Um, and they are a great source for fresh hay of all types. And they have lots of information about which type is which, which type of Timothy, which type of hay is good for your rabbit, plus all sorts of other foods and treats and things. Um, and they used to deliver in two days. It is longer now from uh, due to the COVID problems with deliveries. Their hay comes from Washington and it's very fresh and very good. The Language of Lagomorphs is a website for reading body language for rabbits. I didn't even start getting into that, but it's really interesting and fun to uh, try to interpret what your rabbit's saying. The last one is the nail trim tutorial video, and that comes off the rabbit, House Rabbit Society website. Um, and it's how to trim your nails done by a very, it's, she's a national rabbit educator person. And she has an unusual method for trimming nails. Now, it may not be something everyone wants to do exactly like she does it, but she has lots of tips on there and her general attitude about trimming nails is helpful to listen to. It's a very good, it's a very good video. And just as one last thing about videos online, there's lots of really good stuff and there's lots of really not good stuff. So I hope that this has helped, this hour has helped you kind of learn what's good, what's not good, and you can make your own assessments. But if you start with these websites, you can't go wrong. And then you can have an idea of what's really the right thing for your rabbit. So thank you very much. And I will stop sharing this, Carolyn, and you can do the questions.